Well, hey, Embrace, it is so good to see all of you. My name is Adam. I'm one of the pastors here. To all of you at all of our campuses and network churches, to each and every one of you with us online, we are thrilled that you are here. Uh, Today, though, I want to start by burying my soul with all of you, and I honestly cannot believe that I'm sharing this. Uh, So I obviously communicate for a living, right? And because of this, you would maybe assume that I'm good with words. Like you'd maybe assume that I'm good at pronouncing and saying English words. And honestly, I thought for most of my life that this was true as well, to the point that I really have never even questioned it. Uh, Turns out, I guess I was wrong, okay? Uh, Over the years, different staff who I think love me and uh, people in the church that I love started asking me random questions like, hey, Adam, how do you say this word right here? And I'm like, why does this feel like a trick question? That word, that's especially. Yeah, that word is especially. And then they'd respond kind of arrogantly and say, Adam, there's no X, especially. I was like, okay, I didn't know you know everything, okay? Uh, Another example, as a pastor, I'll often talk about how Jesus has changed my life. You know, a pastor normally talks about Jesus changing my life, but what's the plural way of saying that, okay? What's the plural way of saying that? Our lives, our lives, our lives. I do say it, our lives. Uh, Well, it took only 15 years. I fixed this one now, I think, for the most part. I'll never forget it, though. Uh, Several years back, a guy came up to me. Immediately, I could sense that he was annoyed and was not about to joke with me. But he said, hey, Adam, I have to be honest. I can't stand it. Anytime that you say our lives, it drives me insane. I was like, I thought about it for a little bit, and I was like, okay, well, Jesus loves you, too. And I hope he changes your lives, okay? I hope he changes your lives. I had to. Uh, Another example, uh, right now it is football season. And in the NFL, what's the last game of the year called? Well, I call it the Super Ball, the Super Ball. (laughs) I'll never forget, uh, uh, Brian Rock, our 57th Street campus pastor, came up to me one time and he said, hey, Adam, can you please stop talking about a giant bouncy ball in church? I was like, how dare you? Uh, Other examples of words that it turns out I can't say, library, drowning. I thought there was two Ds. I don't know what it is, ridiculous. Uh, Really quick, first off, can you pray for all the arrogant know-it-alls in our church? Okay, I feel like we should take a moment for that. And also, just for the record, I did graduate from elementary school, okay? But who knew that words could be so hard to say? Speaking of that, today we're starting up a brand new series called The Hardest Words to Say. The Hardest Words to Say. And just to state the obvious, our world is rarely ever at a shortage of words. We live in a world that is quick to speak, slow to listen. We're quick to post, slow to think. We're quick to talk and slow to live it out. And yet the truth is many of us have words that we need to say But for whatever reason, we have it. Words that can bring so much healing into our lives, freedom and growth into our lives. Words that can be so hard to say, and yet we need to say them. Words that God himself would want us to say. And so today, uh, we're going to start out by talking about one of the hardest words to say, and that's the word no. 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 This week, a friend of mine, having no idea about our series and what I was preaching on, randomly told me this week, he said, Adam, one of the hardest words for you to say is no. I'm like, okay, well, I guess the pastor needs to hear this coming Sunday's message. Again, today we're talking about the word no. Now, when I think about Jesus, my immediate knee-jerk reaction is that Jesus is a person who rarely ever says no ever says no. I mean, Jesus is loving and he's laid back. And so we'd maybe assume that if a person wants to meet with Jesus, the answer is always yes. And if you ran out of wine at your wedding and you needed more wine at your wedding, Jesus would raise his glass and he would say yes. And if someone needed help moving across town from one apartment to the next, one house to the next, unlike me, Jesus would say, yes, 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 yes. The truth is, though, 
both directly and indirectly, Jesus actually says no, and he says no often. He says no often. And so today, we're going to look at three specific places. There are many others, but three specific places that Jesus says no and help us to understand when we need to say no ourselves. At one point, uh, early on, Jesus had just been baptized by John the Baptist, and this is a mountaintop experience for Jesus. But as soon as Jesus comes out of the water in the very next verse, we're told this. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Again, the, Jesus has this mountaintop experience, and then immediately after, he's brought out into the wilderness, where there he is tempted by Satan himself. Now, a quick side note, I always warn people that anytime you take a step of faith, I always warn people, anytime you take a step of faith, like you decide to get baptized, you decide to tell someone about Jesus, anytime you take a step of faith, maybe you decide to raise your hands and worship for the first time. You decide to start tithing. You decide to forgive someone who's hurt you. I always warn people, if you do, don't be surprised if immediately after you are tempted or discouraged or both, because this is exactly what Jesus himself experienced. Friends, when this happens, don't be surprised and just know that you're actually on the right track. Going back to our story though, Jesus is baptized and then he's brought out into the wilderness and this is what takes place next. The tempter came to Jesus and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And so Jesus is tempted. And then two more times, Satan tempts Jesus again. And then we're told, this. Jesus said to him, Satan, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and the angels came and attended to him. Seriously, three different times, Jesus is tempted by Satan. And yet instead of giving in to these temptations, what does Jesus do? Jesus indirectly says, no. He says, no. Friends, today, looking at Jesus, what can we learn? It might be so hard to say, but friends, you and I, we need to say no to temptation. Again, this can be so incredibly hard. It can be brutal at times, but you and I, we need to say no. We need to say no to temptation. So I started following Jesus around my sophomore year of high school and for the first three years that I did, yes, I was following Jesus, but I was also following a whole bunch of other things, okay? An example, cute girls, okay? Uh, I, I had Christian friends, and then I had non-Christian friends, and there was some very clear differences. And for the first three years that I was following Jesus, I really didn't have any temptations in my life at all because I just did whatever felt good. Seriously, something is only a temptation if you're trying to resist it, and I didn't resist anything whatsoever. I'll just say it, though, for some of us here today, we've been following Jesus for years, not just three years, but maybe 10 years or our entire lives, and yet we're still at this place. I mean, we're following Jesus, but we also do whatever feels good in our relationships, we follow Jesus, but we also still party like it's 1999. We follow Jesus, but we'll also do anything to cut corners at work and make an extra dollar. Well, by my, my, my freshman year of college at Augie, uh, it all started catching up with me. Like I was miserable trying to live two different lives at the same time until one day I finally decided to start saying no. Just for the record, no one told me. A buddy didn't tell me I should do it. Instead, for the first time, I wanted to say no. Again, today, some of us are here, and we need to start saying no to temptation. And so just to ask you directly, what's tempting you right now? Just to ask the question, what does temptation look like in your life right now? 
I mean, maybe it's saying no and it's telling your best friend, hey, I don't want to get drunk this weekend. Yeah, I just don't really want to do that anymore. And that's so hard to say, isn't it? Maybe it's telling your boyfriend or your girlfriend, and some of your boyfriends are going to hate this. Maybe it's telling them, hey, I don't want to cross this line anymore. It's telling your girlfriend, hey, I don't want to say this to each other anymore because we're acting like we're married. Maybe it's saying no to that person, that person that every time you're around them, you do things that you just regret later. Again, what do you need to say no to in your life? Or honestly, just like me in my first three years of following Jesus, maybe there's something in your life that has never, ever bothered you until right now as I'm saying this. And you just know that you need to say no. Like it's never bothered you before. It's always been cool. And yet as I'm talking right now, God is highlighting it right now. And you just need to say no. Before we go on, I want to highlight something about this, though. For some of us, we've maybe tried to say no for years. We've tried to say no, but we just can't stop doing whatever it is. Well, looking at this story, Jesus says no, but he also does a whole lot more than that. Like when Satan tempts Jesus, Jesus talks back to him. He doesn't just stand there and take it. Instead, Jesus speaks scripture back to Satan. I I love that. And he doesn't just stand there either, hoping that Satan will just kind of leave him alone. Instead, Jesus says, away from me. The Adam Weber translation, Satan, get out of my face. You're not welcome here anymore. For some of us, in addition to saying no, we need to start asking God for his strength because obviously we can't do it on our own. Instead of just saying no, we need, we need to run from the situation. We need to stop putting ourselves in terrible situations. It's like, pastor, I don't know why I keep sleeping with my girlfriend. Like, I just can't figure it out. We've talked about it. We don't want to do this. Well, I got an idea. Maybe stop listening to Bruno Mars together in your dark basement, okay? It's like sometimes God's like, you don't have to pray. Just turn off Bruno, you know? Seriously, though. In addition to saying no, just like Jesus, we need to start carrying scripture with us. And so maybe it's one of my favorite verses out of James chapter four, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. You're struggling with saying no and actually sticking with no, write out this verse, put it on your mirror, put it on your, in, on your dash of your car, write it on your forehead so everybody who comes up to you is like, what does that even, even mean? Again, some of us, we need to start saying no to temptation. Satan, heck no. In the name of Jesus, not today. We need to say no to temptation. On another occasion, early on in Jesus' ministry, Jesus was healing all kinds of people. And recently, he had healed a man with leprosy. Well, picking up the story, here's what happens next. The news about Jesus spread all the more. The news about this man with leprosy being healed, it was like, it just like sent shockwaves out. So crowds of people came to hear Jesus and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus withdrew to the wilderness and prayed. Again, this is Jesus here. And sick people are coming to, be Je- to, to Jesus to be healed. Now, I think we'd all agree that healing people is a very, very good thing to do, especially if you're Jesus. And yet, instead of saying yes, once again, Jesus indirectly says no. Don't miss this. Instead of healing people in this moment, Jesus says no, and he withdraws, and he goes to the wilderness. Like, he gets away from the crowds, and he gets away from the busyness, and he goes to a quiet, quiet place. Friends, looking at Jesus, what can we learn? This is not easy. It's so hard to say, but you and I, we need to say no to busyness. Again, this is such a hard thing to say. It is so hard in these situations, but we need to say no to busyness. No to busyness. Again, Jesus isn't saying no to bad things. It's actually very, very good things. Yet even he needs to say no. I love this quote from the great Corey Ten Boom. She says, if the devil can't make you sin, temptation, 
He'll make you busy. Isn't that true? The devil can't make you sin. He'll make you, make you busy. Friends, today, I'm just curious to ask, and I know it's hard, but today, when it comes to busyness, who or what do you need to say no to? Not in theory, but really think about it. Who or what do you need to say no to for the sake of your mind, for the sake of your joy? And who or what does your family need to say no to for the sake of your family, for the sake of your kids? Again, just like Jesus, it might be really wonderful, good things, things that you enjoy and love, and yet you need to say no. I'll just share that since July 1st, one day a week, I've started saying no to social media. Uh, one day a week, there's no scrolling or comparing. May not seem like a big deal to you, but it's a huge deal for me. The night before, because I have no self-control whatsoever, the night before, I delete all my apps on my phone before I go to bed. And honestly, this one simple thing's been, been huge. It's like one day a week, it's like my soul, it slows down. And I feel more alive because of it. So much so that I'm like, is there a way that I can do two days a week? Maybe for you, it's something in your schedules that you need to say no to. Maybe it's saying no to your friends. No, I can't hunt every weekend. No, I can't golf this week for 10 hours. Maybe it's telling a coworker, no, I can't go that, to that event. No, I, I can't go out tonight with the rest of the office. Maybe it's telling that club that you've been a part of for years. Uh, no, I, I can't be a part of it this year. Maybe it's something that you need to say no to for the sake of your marriage. Seriously, mom and dad, if you're married and you haven't had a date night in the past month, but your kid has made every single t-ball practice, every single band lesson, can I just be honest? And I say this as a friend, that's so stupid. Mom and dad, you are so much smarter and wiser than that. Seriously, if your kids are involved in everything and yet your marriage is falling apart, but Adam, we don't have the time. Yes, you do. Some of us need to start saying no to the hardest people in our lives. We need to start saying no to our kids. But Adam, this is so important to my kids. Mom and dad, away from Jesus, the greatest gift you can give your kids is an awesome marriage. But my daughter, she loves dance and she, she loves this. And my son, he loves sports. I get it. There's no greater gift you can give your kids than a wonderful, life-giving marriage. And so figure out your true priorities. And there's no shame if sports and dance is number one, keep it there. But if your marriage and joy is anywhere up there, start saying no to busyness. I want to go back to this story, though, and this is so important to notice. This is the furthest thing from a self-help message. Jesus doesn't just say no so he can have more free time. Instead, listen to this one part again. But Jesus withdrew to the wilderness and prayed. Friends, Jesus isn't saying no to busyness so he has more me time. Instead, he's saying no very intentionally for the sake of his relationship with God. And so a much better question to ask is who or what do you need to say no to for the sake of your relationship with Jesus? Who or what does your family need to say no to for the sake of your relationship with God? I'll, I'll just say it, this question, even asking it goes against the norm. It's like the opposite of our world. We'll put most things before our relationship with God. Like if even the smallest thing comes up, we will put it before our spiritual lives. Once again, though, looking at Jesus, I know this is so hard. But we need to say no to busyness for the sake of our relationship with God. You and I, we need to say no for the sake of our relationship with God. At another point in scripture, Jesus once again is healing all kinds of people. And as a result, crowds of folks have started following him. And then we're told this. Very early in the morning, 
While it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, Jesus, and when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Everyone is looking for you. This sounds so much like the story that we just looked at, doesn't it? Jesus, again, is indirectly saying no to busyness, but once more, it's not just for the sake of having me time. It's not in the name of self-care. Instead, listen to what, go, what, it, what goes on to say. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. This is why I have come. This is why I have come. Looking at Jesus, what, what can we learn? This is so hard to say, but looking at Jesus, we need to say no to good things so we can say yes to greater things. Again, looking at Jesus, we need to say no to good things so we can say yes to greater things, so we can say yes to the greater purpose that God has on our lives. No, so that we can say yes to make a greater impact for him. The last few years, I've been on a board for this amazing organization, but lately it's just been hitting me that it's a bit of a tangent in my life, or actually a huge tangent in my life. Well, over the last few months, I've really tried to start dialing in my time and energy to focus on what God wants me to do. Again, this board is such a good thing but it's not in line with the greater thing that God has for me personally. And so for months, I've been wrestling with stepping off this board, but again, I'm a people pleaser. And I don't, I don't wanna let anyone down. It's so hard for me to say no, but on Sunday morning, as I started working on this message, I was immediately convicted. And so right then and there on Monday morning, I reached out finally, and I stepped off this board that I've been on. I finally said, no, no to a very, very, very good thing so that I could say yes to greater things. Just to hit this again, God doesn't tell us to say no so that we can have more time to live a safe, comfortable life. Honestly, if you are looking for a balanced life, I would encourage you to not follow Jesus. You won't find it in following Jesus. I love how my friend Hal Donaldson puts it. Hal is one of the most godly, wise people I know. He says, as Jesus followers, the goal isn't to live a balanced life. It's to live an obedient life. Also, Jesus never tells us to say no so that we can be selfish. Instead, God wants us to say no so we can have a greater impact for him, not for ourselves and our own status and our own bank account, but for him. So we can focus all of our time and energy on making a greater difference for the kingdom of God. And so just to ask the question today, what good thing do you need to say no to so that you can say yes to a greater thing? So you can say yes to make a greater impact for God. Maybe it's saying no to a side hustle so that you can fully invest in what you're really passionate about. Maybe like me, it's saying no to a board so that all your time and energy can go in the same direction. No to the things in your life that you keep doing simply because you feel obligated to do them. No so that you can say yes to the things that you love to do. More than anything, it's saying no so that you can fully say yes to God, so you can fully serve him, so that you can fully run after that thing that God has created you to do. I'm not sure if this helps, but when you say no, friend, it's not about you. Instead, it's about God using your life to make a greater impact for him. Again, just to clarify, it's not saying no so you can have more me time and be lazy. It's saying no to focus more and more and more. When you say no to a good thing, so we can say yes to a greater thing. Well, a week ago Friday, it was my day off. And if I'm being honest, even though it was my day off, I was planning on making some phone calls and responding to emails. Well, that Friday morning, it seemed like my phone was vibrating every five seconds. And before the day even started, Literally, before my, the rest of my family even got up, I was completely overwhelmed. 
And I just kind of gave in and it's like, well, I guess I'm gonna work all day long. I'm gonna try to not to let my wife find out that that's what I'm doing, but I'm gonna try to work. But it just hit me. When I say it, it felt like God hit me. This helped me to realize the past couple of months I've been pushing hard and I just knew I needed to say no. So around 8.30 in the morning, I asked Beck, my wife, I said, hey, would you mind if I drove up to the creek? I've mentioned this place before. It's the creek that runs behind where my grandparents used to live and now it's where my parents are. It's one of my favorite places on earth. It's where I would explore as a little boy For me, that crick is holy ground. Well, she told me I could, and as soon as she gave me the ability to go, I grabbed my dog, and I couldn't get in my car fast enough. On the edge of town, I was filling up my car with gas, and my, my, my phone just kept vibrating and vibrating and vibrating. I was just about to start making phone calls because I had an hour and a half that I could use to make all these calls, and then I got this text message from my wife. totally out of the blue. This is all she sent me. If you are resting today, no phone calls, no emails, no texting, no one needs to get a hold of you that bad. What was she telling me? Literally four different times in one text message that I didn't ask for, she was telling me no. She was saying no. I'll just be honest, five years ago, even four years ago, I wouldn't have listened to her. I would have never said no to my phone. Four or five years ago, I was addicted to my phone. And more than my phone, I was addicted to my job, my work that I love so much. But when she sent me this text message, I was so grateful for it. It's like she gave me permission to say no. And I don't know how to explain it because I was only at the creek with my dog for three hours, and yet my soul felt like I was there for three days. And you see, for three straight hours, there's no cell reception. It's one of my favorite things about the crick. So all I did was walk around with my dog, listening for God's voice. All I did was talk with him, asking for his wisdom, his guidance, his encouragement in my life. Literally, I was just like, God, would you speak? Will you just come and speak? Friends, I know that this is such a hard word to say again. One of my closest friends, Adam, you struggle with the word no. It's so hard to say, and yet looking at Jesus, one of the words that we need to learn to say is no. And specifically, we need to say no to temptation. Some of our lives are overrun with crap and sin, and then we wonder why we can't feel God's love in his presence. Some of us need to say no to busyness, not just for the sake of me time and self-care, but for the sake of our relationship with God so we can hear our Father's voice and his words and his wisdom and his love and his grace. Some of us need to say no to good things to say yes to greater things. Not no so we can be lazy and stand on the sidelines of our life. No, it's saying no to good things so we can say yes to greater things. So we can focus all that we are on the things that God has for us. One of the hardest words to say is no. But friend, you need to start using this word. One of the hardest words to say, no. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we are so thankful for who you are. I I continue to be amazed by how you, you meet each of us and you speak to us in a way that we can understand. And I'm so thankful that we have this perfect example in Jesus of what it looked like to walk, to be human, to make a, a difference, to make an impact, but also learn and use this hard word, no. Right now, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would come and meet with each of us right now individually in this room across campuses, network churches, later in the week through YouTube, whatever it is. Would you just minister to us? What is that thing that we need to say no to? Would you just be so gentle and kind? Would you just use clarity? Because some of us, we struggle to hear your voice. Would you just tell us exactly what you want us to say no to, whether it's a temptation, whether it's a good thing for a greater thing, whatever it is, Lord. Would you help us to say no? And then this week, today, would you give us the courage to live it out? to actually say it, to actually live by this word that you have given us. 
Lord, we love you. We thank you. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. All God's people said, amen. Hey everyone, it's Adam from Embrace. If you enjoyed today's message, make sure to subscribe to Embrace's YouTube channel to stay updated. You can also click here to check out other videos. Thanks for watching.